After yet another loss that felt very similar to a lot of other losses, the Phoenix Suns are nearing the end of a season that feels like it can teach us maybe nothing about what this team will look like. On today's episode of Locked On Suns, we'll dive into the Thunder game and where we're headed in a very, very odd, bizarre Suns season. Let's go. You are Locked On Suns, your daily Phoenix Suns podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And we're back. This is Locked On Phoenix Suns. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, and I'm your host, Brendan Clean, a credentialed media member covering the Suns for the past six seasons, a writer at suns.com and the host of the Just Basketball Show, wherever you get your podcast. Thank you for making Locked On Suns your first listen here on this Monday, maybe Sunday evening. If, you first, if it's your first time finding us, go ahead and hit follow or subscribe. Get this show in your feed every Monday through Friday to stay locked on to your favorite team. You can also follow along at Locked On PHX Suns on Twitter. If you're finding us on YouTube, go ahead and drop a comment down below as well with your thoughts on the big subject today or maybe the Oklahoma City game. Either way, get interacting down there. Talk Suns, maybe commiserate, whatever the case may be. Joining us today, as he does every single Monday, is Brandon Duenas. He is a writer at Bright Side of the Sun. Um, Brandon, let's dive into this game. It was a 124-120 loss by the Suns to the Thunder. Uh, Shea Gildas-Alexander goes for 40 Devin Booker goes for 46, and the Suns feel like they're in cruise control most of the game up until the bench comes in at the beginning of the fourth quarter. The Suns blow a 10-point lead. They don't score for four and a half minutes, and the Oklahoma City Thunder win the second half by 16 points and the game by four points. Very, very familiar recipe in this game. I tweeted that it felt a lot like a lot of those November-December games where Booker was out of his mind and you just had to cross your fingers on the rest of it. What did you think watching this one? Got a little bit of a PTSD just flashing back to the days of March when Booker would drop, you know, 46 or 50 in a in a loss. Um, that's just kind of what it felt like. But obviously blowing a 15-point lead and getting outscored by 16 points in the second half is inexcusable. Um, I, I think you got to give some credit to OKC. That's a team that – you know, they're, they're hungry, they're young, just kind of like Orlando sort of surprised us a little bit by hanging around. Um, and that's, that's what you get in March basketball. It's just a lot of useful energy. Uh, these young players just have more of a, like a leash, I would say. So there's, there's a little more freedom and um, it almost feels like rec ball at this point. So I'm just counting down the days to the playoffs, to be honest. Uh, you know, I think a lot of Suns fans at this point, you know, can't wait for KD to get back. And it's, it's really tough to just gauge this team without Durant um, and obviously Aiton was was out tonight and that was also another storyline as well yeah it was uh, the hip thing that that Monty mentioned post game after the Orlando law uh, a win ended up costing eight in a game tonight and uh, you know they missed him I think Biombo it was interesting that they started him but Monty likes to do that sometimes to start players who maybe hadn't been in the rotation just to give them a little bit of that confidence boost or sort of just that opportunity for playing time and set them up for success to play with the starters. Not that big of a deal. Jock Landale plays 15 minutes. Biombo plays 20. They also went small with Baisley at center. I would say none of those things really worked all that well, uh, to be honest with you. Um, it was also the debut of Landry Shamit, which we can get to here in a second. Um, I wanted to, to carry on with the offense, though, for a moment, even though it is a little bit of beating a dead horse. Booker, again, was outstanding not a lot of assists in this game but but Chris Paul was really setting the table for others and Booker was just really you know taking advantage of the space that was provided to him because the Thunder goes so small and so he was awesome but Chris Paul was less awesome and I think we're at this point in the season and I'm, I'm curious what you think of it Brandon this this year which is now 49 games that Chris Paul has played or 50 I don't have the numbers as of today because cleaning the glass doesn't update uh, hourly. It updates overnight, so we'll see what the, the final numbers are after this game. But right now, 48% for mid-range on the season, down from 55% last year, and 52% at the rim, down from 62% or 65% last year, so 13% decrease on that one. 
which would also be by far the lowest of his career since he was a rookie at the rim. I just think even in game like this where Chris Paul was aggressive, he just has too many nights now where he just doesn't make the shots. It was easier to say he just needs to take them. It's a little harder to solve when the answer is you got to make more because that doesn't just happen at the snap of your fingers. Yeah, absolutely. And I think a lot of it's just the lack of separation. It's it's tough for him to create space like like he used to. So now the margin for error is, you know, so much thinner than it used to be for him. So, um, you know, not being able to, he can still get to his spots, um, but it's just not, there's not as much room as, as he's probably used to. Uh, number one, number two is just the, the lack of confidence. I feel like, especially on the catch and shoot, he's just very reluctant to shoot. And that's something there, especially when Durant's healthy, they're going to need him to shoot that because you can't have, you know, a Kogi on one wing, uh, DeAndre and not, spacing the floor and then you have Chris Paul reluctant to shoot and that just defenses will just um, capitalize on that. So I think CP has to get that confidence back and we've seen it in flashes when he'll regain that and like he'll have a game or two where you're like, okay, he looks like he's back um, and then it kind of fades away. Like you said, this is becoming a little bit too much of a regular thing for me at this point and it's it's tough to, uh, you know, rely on someone at his age to carry this much of a workload. But, you know, if the Suns want to win a championship, he has to be at his best. It's, it's really that simple. And he just has it. Yeah. It's weird because I think in an ideal version, it's actually not even that big of a workload, you know, like mm -hmm. exactly. I think that there's a part of it where it, a, a version of it, where it could just be 10 shot attempts a game. And he, you know, he could make 60% of his shots or maybe a lot of them are threes and, you know, he, he doesn't make as many, but, He's spacing the floor. He's more has a, a quicker release, quicker trigger with those catch and shoot threes, which that 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 trend this season, I'm almost just like hesitant to even criticize it or or try to analyze it. Cause it's one of those things where it's like maybe I've I just have no idea what it's like until I'm in in his body in that situation. Cause it it doesn't it defies explanation why after a whole year of being very vocal about the fact that he's emphasizing that, why it would still be so uncomfortable to him. I know one season doesn't undo, you know, 15 years of a career before that, but it's just an open shot at the end of the day. It's very strange to continue to watch him to pass uh, passing those up, but it doesn't feel necessarily like anything's going to change. Do you think that there's, uh, how much hope are you still holding out, Brandon, that there is a little bit of an on switch when it comes playoff time for him to just, find that extra little something like he has done in the past and, and make some of this, you know, put the, some of this behind him and just look like a different guy. Yeah. So to go back to your first point, just about, you know, the emphasizing that shot, I think a lot of it is in general, Chris Paul's just always been a rhythm shooter. He likes to get to his spot and he shoots off the dribble more often than not, because he feels like that's when he's more, most comfortable. It's, it's kind of similar to Deandre Ayton where Ayton, we know, when he's not gonna, he's not even gonna look at the rim sometimes because he's not comfortable shooting. And other times when he gets in his little rhythm, he'll he'll let it fly. So I think it's similar with Chris, where just if he's not like if it's not off the dribble, he doesn't feel as comfortable. So I think that's one of the main things I look at um, as far as holding out hope about him, you know, regaining his uh, you know status. I think it really just comes down to KD. Like when he's back, everyone else's role changes, and that's the thing that everyone has to understand is. He, he's going to make everyone better. We, we already saw that in a small sample size, but it truly will alleviate a lot of Chris's uh, responsibilities, like you just mentioned. And, uh, you know, Book, Akogi's role changes, DeAndre's role change. Like it just, it's a domino effect. So I think there's definitely still a possibility that we can get prime CP3 for a game or two. Um, but it's not something I'm going to be counting on, like, you know, six out of seven games in a seven game series. I don't think the Suns have ever gotten that. So I don't know if sure, they'll be counting yeah. on that, uh, unfortunately, although I do obviously know what you mean. You mentioned uh, Durant and waiting for him to come back. That's going to be the meat of our conversation today. What has this season meant? How do we feel? A little bit of a vibe check. And then, uh, you know, putting our, our sort of um, future glasses on and, and trying to anticipate what it'll feel like as this run unfurls with a, a team we don't really have much of a relationship to and have not seen much. But uh, Landry Shamit came back today to Brandon. 20 minutes immediately became the highest minute getter uh, on this bench. Quick thoughts on on what we saw from him, if, if anything jumped out. It, it felt like a normal Landry Shamit game to me. I, I think Shamit in general just has, especially with uh, the addition of Durant, he's going to have a, a real opportunity to, to be a factor. Just because anytime you, you're, you know, you're shooting confident um, from deep and if he can regain that, 
that confident stroke. I think he'll he'll fit in just fine with those Durant units, uh, especially when uh, Monty liked to stagger him with that bench unit. And I think Shamit will fit like slot, slot right into that spot where, uh, you know, Damian Lee or, you know, uh, one of those other guards were next to him. So I think Shamit could definitely be a factor and it could be a nice little redemption arc for him to kind of uh, finish the season strong. And for, for me, the one thing I'm looking at is this playoff rotation. There's so many open spots still, or, I mean, I don't think there's that many spots in general, but I, it's still so wide open that, you know, Shamit shoots hot to end the season uh, heading into the playoffs. He could secure like one of those last couple spots. I don't think any single player on the bench is positive he'll get minutes in a in a playoff game, which is yep. an insane thing to say on, on March 19th. But I think that that segues us pretty nicely into what we were going to talk about. Big picture today. Up next, what did this season mean? How will we remember it? What did we learn from it? What are our main takeaways? We'll get into our feelings. We'll get into a little bit of a vibe check here next for today's show, guys. Brought to you by Prize Picks. Uh, you know the deal. Prize Picks came in. Daily Fantasy is a little stale, and Prize Picks decided to fix it, and they did. Prize Picks is you versus their player projections. That is the deal. Not a pool, not a league, not head to head. You versus the projections. That's the best part of it. That's what I love about it. That's what makes it fun. So let's say Wednesday night, the Suns play the Lakers. Let's say you want to go more on Anthony Davis points, more on Anthony Davis rebounds, and more on Devin Booker points. Those all seem like pretty safe bets lately. That's it. That's your lineup. You just pick two to six players. They can be on different teams. They could even be playing different sports from different leagues. You can mix and match that way, and you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. Again, no competing against other people, just you versus those projections. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. They offer safe and fast withdrawals. And Prize Picks is currently operational in over 30 states, including, of course, Arizona as well as Canada. Download the Prize Picks app now. Or go to PricePicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. If you deposit 100, Prize Picks will give you 100. If you deposit 50, Prize Picks puts 50 back into your account, matches it for you. Don't forget to enter the promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to. $100. All right. I'm going to leave it open-ended for you, Brandon, with the segments that you can kind of break this season up into, right? Three weeks, Cam Johnson and Chris Paul get hurt in the same game. About a month of Devin Booker being awesome. The Suns being surprisingly good. Campaign looks very good in that stretch. Then Booker goes down. Then he tries to come back on Christmas. Then he's out for even longer. In the middle of that, you have campaign Landry Shamit, even DeAndre Ayton at times Josh Kogi and Tory Craig almost every single player in the rotation getting hurt most recently you've had Shamit out and Kevin Durant the Kevin Durant trade happens but then he's not available so Mikhail Cam and Crowder all gone but nothing to replace them then you get KD for a bit now you're back to that original group post trade before KD returned I don't feel like we've gotten more than a month of anything and now we're sort of left with this roster that wasn't designed to play together. It's it's part of the trade, partial buyout, and part of the original core from the season. What are you walking away from this season? It could be it could be scheme and basketball. It could just be big picture. It could be vibes. What what are you gonna remember this season by, Brandon? Uh, first of all, that, that was a great uh, recap there. Great summary. Um, but more I, PTSD I just... for you there. <laughs> but uh, I think in general, it's just like you mentioned, just a roller coaster. It's, it's been so up and down each month has felt like a different season or a different team. Like it's just, it's something that um, I think it really kind of depends on how this playoff run goes to get to that big picture of like how we actually remember this team. But I think in terms of the regular season, just completely up and down, unpredictable. Um, you know, there's some definite, definitely some highs, especially early on where it looked like this team was going to surprise some people and like they're first in the West and uh, you know, all, all the, you know, Mavs fans and all, all the those Western Conference teams were a little bit, uh, you know, quiet. It seemed like for a second, and then the injuries started to stack on, and you know, we started talking about tanking. So, um, in the same season, we've talked about tanking the, you know, the same team trade for Kevin Durant. So it's just kind of, uh, you know, two different, insane. like, yeah, two different peaks of like a high and a low. So it's it's really uh, it's just insane. Uh, just looking back, I think. It's, it's happened so fast. It's kind of hard to fathom, but it's all at the same time. Like it's just, it's just been a chaotic season with a lot of up and ups and downs. And I just hope they can come together and get one playoff run together healthy. No matter how it ends, that's, that's all you can ask for. 
Yeah, in the first two months of uh, the first month and a half of the season, there were a five game win streak and a six game win streak. And then in December and January, there was a five game losing streak and a six game losing streak. And now the Suns have lost four of five. Um, I kind of think I might not remember much of that at all. I think I'll remember like, Clay and Book fighting uh, that 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 first week of the year with the four holding up, and you know Christmas, which was an awesome game, and the Aaron Gordon dunk and Book getting hurt, and you know I'm sure there's moments I'm forgetting that people are, are propping into people's heads. A lot of McHale games, I'm sure. That, um, that Bulls game with uh, Booker and Aiton looking like Kobe and Shaq was also very fun early in the season. Oh yeah, where Book scored 58. Yep. I was there for that one, so I'll definitely, I mean, maybe not because I didn't think of it until you said it, but I I will now that you told me. Uh, But I think I might even just remember it big picture by two things. I feel like this season for the Suns was the the Sarver sale, Matt Ishbia taking over, and the Durant trade. Like, I don't, I don't, I think last year, 64 wins, I'm, I'm sure if I opened up the schedule and started racking my memory, you know, I will, I would remember many moments from that season. I'm already thinking of them as I'm saying that, you know, I don't know if I'll remember a lot of them from this game, from this season. And I really do think it'll just be not a lost year. Cause this team could very much still win a championship, which is part of why this is so crazy, but just a chaotic season that you never were able to get your bearings. And it was much more defined by these huge, like big picture changes than it really was like growth on the court from different guys or, or anything really like that. Yeah, definitely. And I think just, you know, obviously the Sarver situation kind of the whole thing played out so slowly that it wasn't, it was never really a surprise. Um, but it was just obviously a storyline and Ishbia coming in and doing what he did as fast as he did like that, that Kevin Durant notification, I will remember exactly where I was standing, uh, you know, who I was with when, when I opened that for the rest of my life, that's, that's something I think it's just, that's the number one thing that everyone's going to Where were you? Remember. I don't think I know where you were. I don't think you said. <laughs> I was in uh, Florida on, on vacation actually at the time. And uh, it, I was, I was with, so the, you were up late. Yes. I was up pretty late. I was just, <laughs> I was just about to go to bed. And unfortunately I read that and I was like, all right, no way I'm sleeping tonight. So, um, but yeah, I think ultimately you look at the season. Those are the two things you're going to remember, but that can change very quickly with a, a great playoff run and a championship. And that changes kind of the whole, journey of how you look back it like it kind of it's like it's like revisionist history where you know the suns win 64 games and then game seven happens and all of a sudden you know all those great memories in the regular season kind of mean nothing now to a lot of suns fans from last season so uh you win a championship this year i think everyone's gonna look back at that adversity and kind of uh cherish it a little bit and make it that much sweeter that they're able to come out on, on top but you know if you flip that the other way and they you know the playoffs are a disaster then you know, it's the other side of the coin. So it goes both ways. Yeah, let's just dive in because I, I think we're both kind of looking forward a little bit and, and we'll take a, a good chunk of time to do that. I want to tell people first about the Nissan Most Electric Player of the Week. I think earlier in the week, we already had given this award to campaign. I want to give it to Landry Shamit here today. Um, Landry Shamit is sturdy and steady i feel like there is an elegance to his game i love off-ball shooters and the most electric player of the week is brought to you by the all-new all-electric 2023 nissan aria which is obviously an electric vehicle it's brilliantly fierce it's fiercely elegant it's powerful and landry shamit the way that he can kind of move off the ball the way that he comes across screens when he is aggressive and confident there's really not a lot of players like him you know it's that mold of jj reddick it's that mold of Clay Thompson, you know, he might not be exactly what those players were, but there is something cool and special about a player who can shoot the ball like that off of a complete sprint and do it in his own way. And as Brandon and I just talked about, Shamit might have a bigger role than I think Suns fans were maybe expecting on this team down the stretch of the season as we're about to talk about. The 2023 Nissan Aria packs pin you to your seat power and premium intelligence all in one EV, the all new all electric 2023 Nissan Aria is the EV for people who love to drive. Shop now at NissanUSA.com. Today's show also brought to you by the Built Bar March Madness Bracket. And of course, Built Bar itself. We know you have a favorite bar or puff. I've been telling you to try them for long enough that if you haven't, I don't know what's going on. Go to Built 
March Madness. BuiltMarchMadness.com to vote for your favorite. I'm going with Cookie Dough Chunk Puff. I've been pushing it all the way. And if you want to support your favorite college team, maybe just pick a bar at the same time as well. But you're not just doing it for the fun of it. When you vote for your favorite bar or puff, you're entered into a drawing where 50 lucky Locked On listeners get a free box of Built. That's right, 50. There's not that many people that are going to be voting because, look, not everybody's going to listen. So all you have to do is log on, hit the button, and if your bar wins, even if you just vote, you're put in. But I think if your bar wins, you get an extra little something. You maybe get some more entries. Not only that, but one Locked On fan will get a 12-month subscription to Built to have their best bars or puffs delivered monthly straight to your door. You've got to try them. If you've not done that already, hover to the website while you're there, vote. Or if you've already tried it, vote and order a new box. You know, see, we're, we're getting you either way. Run to BuiltMarchMadness.com right now to vote for your favorite bar or puff and pick up a box while you're there. All right, so talked about what this whole season has been, Brandon, and I think looking forward at what it what it could become, um, I've had a little bit of a of a difficult time with this. When the trade happened, I announced loudly and proudly, I'm not going to withhold the the fan part of me. I'm going to let it happen because this this team is potentially the title favorite, at the very least, the Western Conference favorite. And, uh, you know, you got to enjoy that. But then the other night we were watching some game. I think uh, the Matt, oh, no, I was at the Magic game, whatever the game it was. And I, and my wife was like, who's your favorite player at this point on the team? And it kind of stopped me in my tracks a little bit because I'm like, who do people have a relationship with on this team anymore? And I'm not trying to like overdo this conversation, but I do think it's interesting. And I'm very curious what the people listening think. So, Tweet, tweet at me, drop it in the comments, whatever way you want to get a hold of me. I very much am interested to hear what people think because Booker is the obvious answer, right? I think almost every Suns fan would say him. But that's also kind of weird. Like, there's not a lot of teams where, you know, there's just one player that people feel that history with. And I kind of think that's where the Suns are. Like, he's the most tenured player, eight in his second at year five. And then third is Cameron Payne which this is only like his third season. If you, I mean, you can count the bubble and say like three and a quarter seasons. And then Chris Paul right after that, you know, basically just not having the bubble and that this is his third season because they traded Dario on top of all these other players that had been here a while with, with Mikhail and Cam. So what do you think when I just like unload my, my deepest thoughts and feelings on you like that? Where, where are you with all of this? And am I just overthinking it? No, I think it's a good point. I mean, there's not, it, there's so much turnover that these, a lot of these guys are not, um, like you said, they haven't been here that long. And uh, the guys that have, it's like, um, you know, CP and, and Payne, um, you know, they're, I mean, when campaign's on, he, he really is a fan favorite. He can kind of shift the momentum of games and we've seen what he can do in the playoffs. But um, I think honestly, what what's, it's going to come down to is just the playoffs. That's where you can build those new relationships with the, with the fans. That's where you can become a fan favorite. That's where, Josh and Kogi, you know, you know, strips the ball and dunk, goes and dunks on someone and, and flexes and gets the fans going in, in a playoff game and at a pivotal moment. So that's like, um, I think some of those can be created uh, just organically through that playoff run. But uh, going into the playoffs, I agree. There's not really that same continuity. There's not that same like energy, I feel like, with the team and like the vibes. It feels like a little more professional, which I'm fine with. Like you have Kevin Durant now. It's, you know, it's championship or bust for – uh, you know, for a lot of these guys. And I, I think uh, that's the way they're kind of taking it in. And it's not as uh, laid back and loose with, you know, JaVale McGee barking like a dog and Mikel Bridges running and uh, doing exactly. crazy stuff with Cam Johnson. Um, so there's definitely a different vibe and an atmosphere with the team, but I don't know if that's a good or bad thing yet. We just have to kind of let it play out and, and see how this team gels together in a short amount of time. Even like Javon Carter. Like, I feel like people like Javon Carter – more than they like, I don't know. I'm looking at the box score right now. Uh, Landry Shamit. I mean, that's a bad example because he's hated. But like, you know what I mean? Or Tory Craig, or something, yeah. right? Like, it's just a, it's a, it's a weird place that we're kind of arriving with this team now, where they're just, yeah, maybe it is because last year, you know, the season ended in disappointment, and so you don't have a lot of like positive takeaways from that run so much, and. 
Booker was hurt in the first round and it was more difficult than it should have been. And then the Dallas series was just, they were all bad games. So it wasn't really like memorable. Even if, even if they had won, I don't know what we, that series would have told us outside of like the, the trash talk with Luca. That's kind of like the big memory that I, that I have from that, you know, off the court. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. I just, it's weird with Durant too, because people are going to have no relationship to him as a son by the time the playoffs start. Like that is a completely weird phenomenon. That's just going to be true. I mean, maybe he'll do with some, they do play the nuggets twice that he's supposed to play in. And that could be cool. I don't know if everyone will play their players in those games, but I'm assuming the Suns will, cause they need that time. Mm-hmm. So you could see some, some moments there. I think the Dallas game was already won. And it could be this strange thing where, again, we both agree, I think the Suns could uh, win the championship and maybe some people listening think they will. But it's going to be this weird thing with Durant where he will have to sort of like ingratiate and like sort of rub himself up against (laughs) from like a fan favorite perspective, these Suns fans after he wins a title. Like it could be a dynamic where Suns fans develop a, a, a fondness for him and like really take him under their wing after he wins a championship like next season might be when you really start to feel that this year it'll just be such a blur because the playoffs always are that it it, i mean i guess that's just the duran experience right i don't know i don't know if he has ever had outside of oklahoma city like the most traditional connection to any fan base that he's played for yeah i mean it's just like it still doesn't feel real that he's on the team. It's kind of like, even with Chris Paul, like uh, back when the Suns first traded for CP3, I remember it took me a while to even, like just for that to feel real. Because like, you know, you're training for one of the greatest point guards of all time. Your team is just, uh, you know, taking the league by storm after that slow start. And uh, that season still, even in the playoffs, it it didn't feel real. Just seeing those State Farm commercials with Chris Paul and the Suns. And now Kevin Durant, you multiply that by five. That's how that feels right now. So I think it's going to, mm-hmm. it's going to take some time for that to settle in and, and really feel like he's a son. Uh, but like you said, if they, if they win a championship, I think that changes real quick. I think everyone's going to, uh, you know, jump on. It really depends on how that happens too. But uh, I think, you know, if they do win a championship, it's obviously going to be because of Kevin Durant uh, playing a huge part of that. So, um, you know, Booker, it's still his city. Uh, he's still the face of the, the franchise in terms of in Phoenix, but uh, nationally right now, all eyes are on KD. So it's kind of a weird, uh, weird mix that the Suns have never really had before. So there's, there's so many things to that factor into this, but, uh, like you said, it's, it's going to take some time for that to really feel real. Yeah. Because even, you know, like the 92, 93 team, obviously a bunch of people embraced Chuck right away. And he had such an awesome regular season that again, by the time the playoffs came around, it wasn't exactly the same as what we're seeing right now, because, He won MVP. He was awesome. He gave fans, he played 76 games. He gave people a whole bunch of history with him. They felt like they already, he was already a son by that point. Whereas it's not even a a critique of like player empowerment and trades. And I'm not doing the, the coincidentally, the Barkley thing to Kevin Durant. I'm just saying he just will have played like single digit games. It's just weird. But then you look at that other, the other players on that 92, 93 team, it's like, Tom Chambers had been there for a while. Kevin Johnson had been there for a while. You know, even some of the smaller smaller pieces were longtime role players for this team. And so, you know, people might not have even always had Charles Barkley as their favorite player, but they felt like he was a perfect fit and, and was the right guy to be leading them. And then maybe you gravitated towards some of these other pieces and, and the Suns just don't really even have that. So, I mean... If I'm asking you like the pie, like the distribution of, I know favorite player seems like a 10 year old thing to care about, but I think it's like a good sort of approximation for like a little bit of what we're talking about with connection and stuff. Is it 90% Booker right now for Suns fans? And then, you know, maybe like 5% Aiton. I don't even know. Is that, I mean, what do you think it is? I think it's probably like 99.9% Booker at this point. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, but, but yeah, I think, like I said, I, I think just the playoffs and what happens in that run, that's where that those memories can be formed very quick. Like just for example, I, th- I feel like Josh Kobe could be the guy I already mentioned earlier. He could be someone that wins a lot of Suns fans over if we get good at Kobe and that could actually shoot uh, and, you know, make some big plays. Um, mm-hmm. So I think, 
a lot of it. And the other thing is like, we're in uncharted waters. Like this Kevin Durant doesn't get traded like in the middle of the season. It's just, it's something that just doesn't happen. Uh, just dating back in history. Someone of his talent yeah. is just so rare that uh, it's, it's really just, I mean, it, it's not even rare. It's, it's like literally never. Yeah, exactly. So there it's, it's tough to like, there's no, there's nothing to really compare it to. Um, so it's, it's definitely an interesting situation. And then, you know, I don't, Honestly, at this point, I, it's just getting the playoffs healthy with with your your big four. Um, that's that's all I care about at this point. You know, the regular season to me, like we talked about, is a roller coaster, ups and downs. Like I just I, all I want is health and let them figure out how to play with each other on the fly. That, that's all we can ask for. I will say, uh, and this is selfish. I you you meant you gave me the compliment earlier of like nice recapping of the season. Um, I have had to do a podcast every single day of this hellish season. <laughs> Uh, I just want a couple of good games. My birthday is on April 3rd. I would really enjoy if Mr. Durant could provide a very awesome basketball game to me on Thursday, April 6th against the Denver Nuggets. So I will selfishly say that I want more than health. I want to be entertained (laughs) for the last two weeks of the season. I want him to come back. I want him to come back on Wednesday, March 29th against the Wolves, if not sooner. And uh, his health be damned. I want it personally, and I don't care what the ramifications are. I want my entertainment first and foremost, and that's the only thing that matters. Forget a championship. It's just all about me. Um, no, I I don't really think all that, but I, it would just be nice to have. Like, that Dallas game was so much fun. Can we just get that, like, two more times? Yes. I know the playoffs will be like that every night, so, like, I, you know, I'm – being a little greedy, needing it sooner. Like I want it now. I'm Veruca Salt or whatever, but, um, I do, uh, I do want it. Um, I do want some more of those like to, to finish up on the fandom thing. Do you know anyone who is a Suns fan who tells you who, who, you know, that Aiton or Paul are their favorite Suns players? I don't think I know anybody who, who, who feels that way. It's, it's pretty rare, um, honestly. Like, there's, I know there's some kind of crazy, there right? Are some eight, there are some eight in stands, but even those people, it seems like they're more like Booker's, like, still their, their guy. Um, and Chris Paul, like, he has kind of like, kind of like Durant coming over. He had a ton of like, Katie had obviously has more fans in now. He's more relevant and still, you know, ridiculously good. Um, but CP kind of had his own fan base that traveled with him when he came here. I don't know if you remember that. It wasn't the same as KD, but. He, he kind of has that as well. So, um, but yeah, it seems like Suns fans, it's just Booker. Like it's just, it always has been, it always will be. Um, but, you know. If Which DeAndre isn't necessarily had- a negative, right? Like, I think it's very yeah. cool to have that bond, especially like it, it kind of makes it even more bizarre, right? Where it's like mm-hmm. everything else has been kind of cobbled together. And yet you have this very big outlier in the modern NBA of a player who stays with his team for a decade. And like, that is it's it's also a very cool thing that I'm not trying to like discount, but mm-hmm. usually it's him and then maybe some other stuff. You know, Steph's been there forever, but also Clay and Draymond have. You know what I mean? Or even some Kavon Looney's been there for like almost a decade. It feels like himself. You know, there, there's all those players you could choose from, and and with the Suns, it's kind of just one. Yeah, and like the Bucks even could be used as an example with like Giannis, Middleton, and Drew just going through those early struggles um, when their first. Mm-hmm few playoff runs came like they fell short and so it's yep. it'll have a different Brooks feel. been there for a while right yeah yeah so it'll, it'll obviously have a different feel if they are able to win a championship it's not but it's booker is the guy that's been through it you know he's been through all of it and that's why i think you know if they're able to pull it off it's just gonna it's gonna be one of those full circle moments for him that uh he really does deserve in, in this modern nba where everyone's kind of jumping ship and you know taking the easy route or complaining uh he could have easily tried to demand a trade and get out of here when things are ugly, but he stayed loyal uh, throughout. So I think, you know, that's, that's the main reason that that bond is so strong. All right. Last question. Any uh, bad bunny thoughts? Uh, You don't have to answer that question. (laughs) Yeah. I'll I'll plead the fifth on that one. Um, Okay. Hey, it's the hot topic. So I feel like maybe the YouTube algorithm will sense me saying that and and place us a little higher. We'll see. Um, But no, that'll wrap us up for today, guys. A little bit of a different show, but Frankly, didn't really want to break down another weird loss in super deep detail. You can read Brandon's writing at Bright Side of the Sun. Hit follow or subscribe if you're finding the show for the first time. Get this show in your feed every Monday through Friday. Get locked on to your favorite team. We'll be back tomorrow 
A little bit of a break between games. Aaron Edwards will be here at some point before the game, and then we'll have a recap against the Lakers uh, of the game against the Lakers on Wednesday night, and I will be taking Friday off. But that'll be the rest of the week, guys. Thank you for making Locked On Suns your first listen. In the meantime, between the next show, go make Locked On NBA your second listen. Get caught up on everything going on around the whole league. That show is available on all podcast platforms as well, and I'll talk to you all tomorrow.